Welcome to another episode of the Hammered Ham N6TLU in command of a realistic DX150B receiver. What I've done this time is added a cool feature which will allow you to run your band spread in a calibrated mode. No more guesswork. Take a look at this. So here is the DX150B. Now they made three different versions of this receiver. They had the plain 150, the A, and the B. My favorite of all of them is the B. Then they advanced to the 160s. Okay, looks just like this receiver. Same type dial. You got your main tuning here. That's analog, all right, with a pointer. And then over here, you've got your band spread. And the band spread allows you to listen to, say, ham band segments like 80 meters, 40 meters, 20, etc. Right? But when you want to use the main tuning dial, they say to put the band spread at the high side, which is here, and that should calibrate the main tuning dial. So I'm at 4.5 to 13 megahertz, which is band C. So I go up here around 5, we should hear WWV. There it is. Now I can use my band spread and fine tune that. Okay. Antenna trimmer. So you can see it's pretty darn close. It's a little bit off to the left, but not too bad on calibration. All right. So now let's say that I want to listen to 40 meter ham band. So I'm going to pick my main needle. I'm going to go up here to the star. So that's what the manual says is that you put your tuning dial on these stars and there's one on each of these bands and that calibrates it for the hand band operation. So now I'd be able to take my band spread control. Here comes 40, here comes 40 meters. There's 7.3. Okay, there's some form broadcasts there. Put in the sideband. Um, and sure enough, or what do you call that thing? there's some 40 meter operation in that band spread allocation like they said there should be. So that's all well and good and it appears to be fairly close. But let's say that you want to be closer, right? So if I'm at 7.1 megahertz, I really want to be there. I don't want to say, well, I might be off an eighth of an inch, all right? Especially if you're in the CW bands and you're trying to say, I'm hearing this guy at 7.055 meg, well, let's say, all right? So wouldn't it be cool if you could take your receiver, reach around the back, flip on a switch, and calibrate that main dial to where that band spread was on the money? Wouldn't that be nice? Well, this receiver can do it. So here we are, 7 megahertz. The band spread is all the way at the high side, like the manual says. Flip the old magic switch. I can zero beat that right at 7 megahertz. So that would mean if I were to go 7 megahertz here on the band spread, which is there, and then take this to their magic star. Is that really seven megahertz? Well, I can make it seven megahertz. Just like that. And now, my band spread is calibrated, and I don't have to rely on that little painted on star. I'm on the money. So let's pop the top on the DX150 and see how D-Lab did it. And here it is. Look at there. There's the calibrator. Nice and compact. You can put this in any receiver. Do you believe me? I wouldn't. That's a little bit of trickery from D-Lab. Alright, so here's a real story. Right there. That is the D-Lab 1 MHz calibrator mounted inside 
of the DX150 receiver. It takes nine volts to operate, which I came over here and tagged that right out the voltage regulator. And then this little purple wire goes down through a convenient hole and hooks to the antenna jack on the rear of the radio, injecting the one megahertz signal when you flip on the toggle switch. All right, for the fun of it, I've hooked up my Heathkit frequency counter. I flip this guy on. I'm monitoring right across the antenna jack going into the back of the radio. And there is our one megahertz signal. Off. On. Pretty darn close to one megahertz. This circuit is very basic, and what's really nice about it is it actually operates at the resonant frequency of that crystal. There's no little variable caps to tune this guy in. It's perfect right off the bat. Here's one of the boards that has not been installed. You can see the convenient built-in switch which mounts the board onto the back of your receiver with no modifications to the DX series. Okay, But what's really nice about this module is you don't have to power it off the power from the radio which can be anywhere from 9 to 12 volts DC. You can run this little guy off of a 9 volt battery and you can install it in any type of receiver including tube type. Well here's another D-Lab 1 megahertz oscillator running this time on a 9 volt battery. Here's the output on my freak counter. Pretty much dead nuts. 1 megahertz. Remember no adjustments necessary. It runs at the true calibrated frequency of that crystal when it was made. And with a 9 volt battery, she'll run for a long time because this thing draws less than 10 milliamps to operate. For this project, I ordered production quality circuit boards and I used top quality components to build these, including crystals that retail for about 20 bucks a piece. I'm only building 12 of these. If the project is successful, and people are interested, I'll build more. So you may be saying to yourself, or maybe you'd like to say to me, D-Lab, why would you want to build a calibrator like that for a receiver like this? Well, number one, it's my favorite receiver, and I got tired of trying to figure out where I was on the band, because I enjoy listening to the ham bands. I don't like searching around saying, boy, that guy should be up here and not over here. So that was the main reason. But the other reason is, it's a versatile calibrator that you can put in any receiver that doesn't have a calibrator and has this analog dial type setup. There's a lot of receivers out there, guys. A lot of the old Nationals, Lafayettes, Heath Kits, etc. that didn't have a calibrator and they never offered one. You can put this one in those radios and make it happen. So the hammered ham ain't just about drinking wine. Sometimes he comes up with a good idea. So some quick things I need to point out. If this little board intrigues you and you'd like one in your classic receiver, there are some options. You do not have to get it with the flying leads that hardwire into the radio. I can put a 9 volt battery clip on this thing so you can just let it run on the battery. And if your radio has a lift lid, it's easy enough to change it. The other thing is, is the power switch does not have to hard mount to the board. I can make that remote with a little pigtail. So you can mount the board somewhere in your radio and put the switch somewhere else. Whatever you want to do, it's possible with a little D-Lab 1 megahertz oscillator board. So do you want one? If so, send me a message. Tell me what the receiver is, tell me what your specifications are, and I'll build it to fit. Hope you enjoyed the video.